Okay, so today I wanted to give a quick status update of our sheet metal finger brake project we've been working on. I'll show you some of the components that are completed and we'll go over a few of the issues we've dealt with and what's remaining to get the project done. Hope you enjoy. Okay, so far for the uh, finger brake, uh, we have uh, the side plates uh, just about done. Um, consists of three different components here. Uh, we've got the hinge plate, uh, the base plate, and then the adjuster bar. Uh, the adjuster bar will be, uh, you can release the tension on these and slide it in and out. Uh, and that will actually really, uh, adjust the height components uh, of your sheet metal thickness. Um, these holes are bored. This is all half inch cold rolled steel and we used stainless steel uh, socket head cap screws uh, that are counter bored uh, just to keep everything nice and clean. The adjuster pointer is made of brass. Uh, so we've got two of these components. We've got a left and a right. And uh, like I said, they're, they're pretty much done. We'll just do some final deburring on them and that'll be that. And next we have the uh, side component of the upper assembly. So the sheet metal will be clamped under this part and the fingers will be mounted uh, along the plane here. So we have two matched pieces. Um, the uh, getting everything, all the dimensions exactly right is, is pretty critical if you want uh, alignment to work well. So, um, board holes and some tapped holes for the adjuster bar that will go over the top, the tensioner component. Um, everything is uh, just about ready to go. Again, some more deburring is required, uh, but those are, those are matched and working well so far. And the next component we have, we've got two of the brake arms. This is the actual component that you'll lift up on uh, to bend the metal. Um, these holes are bored to match the pivot pins and the main hinge assembly. Uh, I've got some more work to do on these. We will be doing, doing some radiuses uh, to make it uh, fit when everything's assembled. I've got a radius out here at this end to make it more comfortable in your hand. And probably some light deburring on these. Uh, again, half inch uh, cold rolled steel. Uh, seems to be working just fine. And two smaller components are the uh, the tension or the fore and aft adjustments for the upper plate. Uh, these are simple. Uh, they're just half inch cold rolled. A couple uh, counterboard holes, tapped hole, and I'll be making uh, some knobs that are knurled, probably out of aluminum or brass to make everything match. And that'll do that. Okay, hopefully this doesn't blow out the camera too much here. Uh, some of the most tricky parts so far have been eccentrics. Um, so this is an eccentric, and this is the diagram that I came up with uh, to work it on the rotary table. But in reality, uh, these two, um, they're kind of small, and I just said heck with it. I put them on the small CNC mill and uh, just automated it and just let it run. They came out okay. Uh, they did require a little bit of finish uh, filing to get them somewhat round, and they're actually not round at all. I've got some backlash in the mill that I need to work on. Um, and these came out somewhat egg-shaped on the outside. The inner bores were done um, either on the lathe or on the on a boring head in the uh, Bridgeport mill prior to doing the CNC work on the profile on the outside. But they do match and uh, they work well. It's just an aesthetic thing that you know that they're not absolutely round uh, where they should be. Uh, they still need to have uh, drilled and tapped holes for the tensioner rods. And these are the eccentrics. Um, uh, they actually came, this one came out really nice. This is cold rolled half inch. Uh, I haven't done any work to it other than uh, a very light deburring on the outs on the uh, just the edges. Um, the finish was spectacular. Brand new three flute solid carbide half inch end mill. I ended up chipping it, making another component after this before I got to the next one. Um, so the next one's not quite as nice uh, and uh, there's another issue with that as well. So like I said, this is half inch cold rolled. I ran out of that material so I went to the store, um, picked up some what I thought was cold rolled. It turned out to be hot rolled and it turned out to be 5 eighths of an inch thick. Uh, so it's a bit thicker so I'll need to mill that down which is okay. Get rid of some of that mill scale although this was really clean. Um, 
hot rolled. It looks so good that I thought it was cold rolled. But the one thing you'll notice is the surface finish. Don't mind the pen marks on it. But the surface finish on the cold rolled is ten times better at least than the hot rolled finish We're using the same carbide three flute half inch end mill that I did end up chipping. And here's where I chipped it. So uh, for some reason, I fit it a little too slow or something, and I got some chatter marks. Well, the chatter marks are the result of chipping it. I don't know why the cutter flute was chipped to begin with. Maybe it was a feed rate problem or something, but that was all done manually on the rotary table. This one came out fine. Um, again, it's just a little bit smaller in dimension, which is the, the half inch is the correct size per the drawing, so I will be milling this down. Using Autodesk Fusion 360, I was able to export a drawing of the eccentric strap uh, for the rotary table work to use on the bridge port. This drawing allowed me to uh, calculate how far I need to move the spindle over, as well as the degrees to rotate the rotary table to achieve the exterior profile. Here I'm boring the ID of the eccentric strap, and this is how I mounted the eccentric strap on the rotary table for profiling the outside. That will do it for another installation of the finger brake project and if you have any questions or comments please write them below and I'll uh, get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you very much for watching and if you enjoy these videos please subscribe.